This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. One of two girls that swept away in St. Mary found it dead. The body of one of the two girls that swept away by a river in St. Mary on Thursday has been found dead. The discovery was made this morning. Her identity is yet to be disclosed, and the commanding officer for the St. Mary Police, Superintendent Bobbitt Morgan Simpson, says that the search continues for the other missing girl. The girls aged 14 and 10 are related. They were swept away while in the community of Jobs Hill. Sections of Jamaica have been experiencing increased rainfall in recent days. More details to come. Man shot dead in downtown Kingston. The body of a man with a gunshot wound was found at the intersection of Hanover and the Port Royal Street in downtown Kingston this morning. His identity is yet to be disclosed. Superintendent of the Kingston Central Police Division, Barons Ford Williams, said the hands of the deceased were bound. The incident is being investigated. Up to August 22, the police division reported 31 murders and 30 shootings. Another St. Catherine woman killed in domestic disputes. A 34-year-old woman was stabbed to death allegedly by the father of her only child in Berkshire Hall District of St. Catherine on Friday morning. The man is now in police custody. Dead is Leslie and Nikisha da Costa. She shared an 11-year-old son with the man. It's reported that about 2 a.m., the man attacked the woman and stabbed her repeatedly in the face and the upper body. The man subsequently turned himself into the Linstead police and is being held on suspicion of murder. It is the second killing linked to domestic dispute in St. Catherine in four days. Alicia Patience was allegedly stabbed to death by her boyfriend in the rural community of Dunfa in Louisville on August 22. The 35-year-old attacker turned himself into the police in the company of his supervisor a few hours later. Two children were left motherless. Police searching for suspects who abducted taxi operator and a woman in downtown Kingston. The Kingston Western Police are searching for two suspects who abducted a taxi operator and a woman from the Kingston waterfront in downtown Kingston on Tuesday. The taxi operator has been hospitalized after he was seriously injured in the incident. It's reported that about 9.30 p.m., the taxi operator and the 29-year-old woman were in the UDC car park on Ocean Boulevard when they were attacked by two men, one armed with a gun. The two were robbed of cash and other personal items, then forced into the taxi cab. They were taken to a location behind a separate limited where the woman was taken into bushes and sexually assaulted. The taxi operator was stabbed in the neck by the men who fled the scene. The two victims were taken to the hospital for treatment. 19-year-old man charged with the murder of a pulsar in Kingston. The Kingston Western Police have charged a 19-year-old man for the murder of an upholsterer along Orange Street in Kingston last month. Richardo Bailey has been charged with a shooting with intent and illegal possession of firearm and ammunition. Homicide detectives reported that on July 17, Gary Parks was walking along Orange Street when he was allegedly attacked by the 19-year-old who opened a gunfire on him. A police team in the area responded to the gunfire and observed the suspect standing over the wounded man along the roadway. This led to an exchange of gunfire, however, the 19-year-old escaped. He was captured a week later by the police. I am safe, a St. Andrew businesswoman denies that she's missing. 27-year-old St. Andrew businesswoman Tonika Williams says she is not a missing but attending conferences overseas. Williams, who is blind, has declined to give the name of the location. The Jamaica Constabulary Force reported on Friday morning that she was missing. It said she was last seen at home on Par Drive in Norbrook on Thursday afternoon. But Williams said she is away on business. She has not contacted the police. I spoke to my parents last night to say I am safe, I am sound and I am attending conferences. I had to do this for the benefit of my interest and my company, she told the news. I ask that my decision be respected, and when I am ready to speak out, I will, she added. Williams is the owner of Creative Minds Business Services, 
which caters to audio production and the broadcasting needs. Family seeks answers after a teenager slain in alleged firefight. When an aunt of 16-year-old Naranda Booth heard gunshots ring out around 10.30 p.m. on Water Lane, Kingston on Wednesday, she never thought the boy could have been the target of the explosions. But that reality has sunk in as the gloom hovers over buildings 33 and 34 on Darling Street near Tivoli Gardens Thursday as the grief-stricken friends and relatives gathered in the midst of blaring music and the morning. The Denham Town High student, who would have started the 10th grade in September, was killed in an alleged shootout with the police around 10.30 p.m. Wednesday on Water Lane in Kingston. His aunt, who only gave her name as Tisha, says the entire community is heartbroken. She was jolted from sleep by the sound of gunfire. When me hear the explosion, me run out of my bathroom, I never know say my nephew are dead, Tisha told the news. The Independent Commission of Investigations, the watchdog that investigates the complaints against the police, confirmed that it was probing the fatal shooting, which reportedly involves a 15-year-old. Booth celebrated his 16th birthday on June 24. Another man who was held in the incident reportedly claimed that he told the police he was 15 to avoid being killed, Tisha said. When the police asked him why him tell them lie, him tell them so because if him did tell them him at 18, they would have killed him, she said. Indicom said the man in custody has been interviewed. The incident reportedly involved four men, two of whom escaped. The watchdog said the police have stated that three law enforcers were on patrol when they were fired on by a group of four men. After the police reportedly returned the fire, one man surrendered and Narando was discovered with gunshot injuries. He died at hospital. The others escaped. Indicom said one board imitation firearm wrapped in black tape was reported as recovered from the scene. Tisha is insisting that Narando was no wrongdoer and spent most of his time dancing and playing football. When him ready, him go him lick a party. The dead shake up the whole community, make everybody a cry, the aunt said, shaking her head. Tisha said the family had last seen the teenager on Wednesday when the man now in custody told Narando to go for a drive with her friends. The next time she saw him was as cold a corpse when she went to identify his body. The boy's father is reportedly distraught and his mother, who resides overseas, is also struggling to cope. About three times him father dropped down. If you go past Facebook, everybody asks about him. Him not mix up in a crime or nothing, Tisha said. She believes the police profile teenagers in urban centers as wrongdoers. Indicom said all concerned the police personnel provided initial accounts of the incident to the investigative team and were each served a Section 21 notice to provide a statement and to attend interviews. Indicom encourages the public to come forward with information by contacting the head office or sending information, photos or videos to Indicom's official WhatsApp at 876-553-5555. St. Mary Farmer Stabbed to Death A 36-year-old St. Mary Farmer was stabbed to death during an alleged dispute with another man on Thursday. The police say a suspect has been arrested. The deceased, who was also a shopkeeper, has been identified as Oral Ziggy Murphy from Fontabella or Acabesa. The police say about 1.30 p.m., Murphy was in his community when an argument developed between him and a man. Murphy was stabbed. The police were summoned and Murphy was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. A police statement did not provide any details on what may have triggered the dispute. Repairs begin on Aberdeen High School after freak storm last month. Reconstruction work has commenced at Aberdeen High School in St. Elizabeth on buildings that were damaged during a freak storm last month. Anthony Foster, chairman of the school, says construction and refurbishing works started on Monday. The roof of the building which houses the Office of the Guidance Counselor, Physical Education Department, as well as the Mathematics Department was blown away. The library and the two classrooms are also damaged. Mr. Foster said that the repairs to the Guidance Counselor's Office, Physical Education Department, and the Tuck Shop should be ready by September while overall repairs will not be completed until about mid-October. However, the work should not affect the reopening of school in September. I was told that the 
the, the guidance counselors office, math department, P department, and the tuck shop would be ready for September. But the overall repair would not be completed until roughly mid-October. We are confident that with what we have, with the limited space we have, and with the number of students we would have gotten through the PEP examination, that we'll be able to work through the difficulties and class will resume on time and we'll be able to deliver lessons to the student with the limited space we have until we have all our classroom or all the facilities back in place. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.